Welcome to the LTI Spotlight series, where we showcase lots of different ways people are making LTI work for them in the market. I'll be your host, Linda Fang, and I'm with Unicon, a digital services consulting firm focused on the education ecosystem and committed to enhancing digital teaching and learning experiences through technology. We're kicking off our LTI Spotlight series with a coding session with my friend, Martin Leonard. Martin is with Turnitin, a commercial internet-based plagiarism detection service. He's also one of the co-chairs for the LTI Working Group, and he's developed several example tools demonstrating the features of LTI 1.3 and LTI Advantage. In this series, Martin will show us how to convert a standalone tool to adopt IMS standards for LTI 1.3 and LTI Advantage certification. During this live coding session, he'll show us how to use a set of open source PHP libraries to provide the LTI Advantage capabilities. So excited to have you here, Martin. Over to you. Thank you very much, Linda. Uh, yes, so as Linda mentioned, uh, I'm an integration software engineer at Turnitin and co-chair the LTI working group. And today we're gonna build a tool from scratch using uh, PHP and the LTI PHP library. So the library that we're going to be using is available on the IMS GitHub. Um, there's a link here to the library. And uh, there's also a link to the example tool that I'm going to be building. So we're going to start from scratch and then go from that example of nothing all the way up to a full LTI advantage tool using all of the services plus some extras maybe. So let's get started. What we're going to do first is we're just going to have a quick overview of what the application looks like before we do anything with LTI. So here I have a game and it's called uh, Interstellar Intruders because it's not a knockoff of another well-known game where I have all these asteroids coming towards me and I can shoot them and aliens shoot at me and they crash into me. And it's a great game to have. I might have it as a educational game, I might have my students want to play it. And if that's the case, that's great. They can play the game and they get a score from the game, but that's it. I have no way of tracking what the game is doing, um, accessing the game. I'm just giving out a link to a website. Uh, there's no way of knowing whether a student has actually interacted, what they've done with it. And the experience for the student isn't very personal. So we're gonna take this game that we have and I have the code up here for it. Um, we've just got this game.php and a whole bunch of JavaScript. And we're gonna take this game and we're gonna make it into a full LTI Advantage tool. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to make a basic LTI 1.3 launch. Um, and that is done through OpenID Connect. Uh, and in OpenID Connect, there are two phases to a launch. Um, you do an initial uh, kind of handshake to say, hey, I'm about to launch in, and then you actually do the launch. Um, and when you do the launch, that launch is signed. And we, so we need to know, you know who each party is and kind of combine um, our uh, credentials so that we know that where the launch is coming from is actually who they say they are. So to do that, we have um, this data model. So this is what's called a registration. Um, it's very similar to a standard OpenID Connect registration, but we're gonna do it for LTI. We've got our um, LTI registration here and a key set with keys in it. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the details of this. Um, it's just showing that we have information telling us about our platform that is going to launch our tool and what credentials we're going to use to communicate with the platform. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to import our library into this uh, into this application that we have here. So this uses Composer, um, and luckily the PHP library has a handy dandy uh, Composer functionality so we can just pull it in like this and that's all we need in Composer. Now we have access to the library and we can 
use it how we want. Uh, now for that registration diagram with the entity relationship that I just showed you, uh, we're going to need to store that data somewhere. Uh, this setup has uh, a Docker file, which is going to uh, set up a Postgres database. So we can just create some tables in there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create uh, a new file and I'm going to call it LTI init. SQL, um, and this is just going to create a whole bunch of tables that I displayed before and then populate them with a bit of data. So here we've got those tables and we've got a bit of data with some credentials that we can use to communicate with the platform. So we'll save that. And now we need to inform the library and tell it how we're storing all of these credentials. Because when we're going to get a launch from the platform, it's going to say, hey, look, I'm using these credentials. I'm using this registration. This is my issuer. This is my client. Um, and the library needs to know where on your system uh, it can find all that information. So we can do that in here by creating a new file. And we're going to create a new file here and we're just going to call it um, example postgres database and in that file uh, we're going to firstly import um, a couple of things so here um, we're just importing our autoloader uh, for composer and then we're also going to import the library um, for the IMS global LTI library through Composer. And this is going to allow us to implement the database class. So the database class looks like this. And we can just say, OK, inside this database class, um, it's got two methods that I need to, um, I need to implement. Uh, so before I can do that, I need to actually connect to a database. So let's just stick that in there. And this is going to connect to our database that will come up with Docker. And then we can grab our first method, which is going to say how we're going to fetch registration information. So here we're saying find registration by issuer. So we can pass in an issuer, and it will find the registration that is linked to that issuer. It will search in the database for it, do a few checks to make sure that it is actually there. Um, and then once it's done, it will create this registration um, object in the library, fill in all of the details in it, and return that um, back to the library so that it can use it whenever it needs to fetch information about a particular registration. Uh, the next method in here is we need to find a deployment. So a deployment is done so that we can link a registration to a particular customer. So we can say, hey, this registration is being used by my university. And the university would have a deployment of it that you would link to a billing account or something like that. So here from, from that, we want to find the deployment. And again, it just looks up in the database and returns this deployment object that's in the library. And then lastly, I'm going to add in a little handy function that we'll come into later. And this one is uh, just for finding some information about the keys that are uh, currently present in the database. Um, and I'll talk about this later when we come to making a JWKS URL. So that's all the data backend kind of dealt with. Uh, we can actually get on now with making our application launch through LTI and through OpenID Connect. So as we were talking about earlier, we've got this kind of handshake before we can actually launch into our game. Uh, what's going to happen is the platform is going to call an OpenID Connect login endpoint on the tool and say, hey, I'm about to do a launch. So it's going to call a login endpoint. Well, we're going to need to create a login endpoint. So let's uh, create a new file. And let's just call it login.php. 
So inside this, this is where we're going to receive that uh, OpenID Connect login request. Um, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make sure that we that the request is valid, that it has a registration that we know about, and we've also got to return all of the correct data back to the platform. So at first thought, it seems like it's a kind of difficult, kind of arduous task to make sure that you're returning all of the correct data um, and that we validate everything correctly. But using the library, we can kind of simplify that a lot and save us a lot of time. So again, we're just going to import the library here. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a new OpenID Connect login. So we can do that quite simply uh, using, using this. So we're just going to create a new OpenID Connect login. We're going to input that database that we created, the database example. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow the library to look up the registration, make sure the registration exists, confirm everything, look up any extra information that it needs to, and then return and redirect with all of the OpenID Connect um, information on the end of it. Here, we're just going to say, uh, when you've done the redirect, we want you to go to the tool host and the game.php, which was where we started. It was that original file that we had. So that's the first bit done. Now, we, when the platform is launched, it's going to go to the login endpoint, go back to the platform, and then it's going to launch into the game. So when it launches into the game, which is this file here, we need to validate that it is actually an LTI launch. At the moment, this is just a fairly static page. Uh, we can put a bit more information into it, and we can validate that it is actually an LTI launch. So again, we're going to do what we were previously doing by importing the library. Um, and then this time, we're going to create a new LTI message launch. So again, the library has a handy dandy way of doing that. Um, we can just say we want to do a new LTI message launch and that we're going to validate it. What this will do is this will go through, make sure that all of the required parameters are there. It will validate the signature. It will fetch the um, JWKS from the platform, validate the uh, public key, and that the request was signed with the private key. You know, all of this heavy lifting that usually you'd have to spend a long time programming and make sure it works correctly, we can do in one simple line of code. And then at the end of this, it returns us with a launch. So this launch is just um, an object that we can pull information out of about what the launch is doing, um, what type of launch it is, any metadata around it. So what metadata can we get out of it? Well, how about we pull out the name? So here, we're going to say um, we want to display the name of the current user. Um, and so I'm going to set that as a variable in my JavaScript. And then in the launch, I'm going to pull out uh, out of the launch data, I'm going to pull out the name. I'm just going to set that in the JavaScript as the current name. And that will allow for the launch uh, to know who's launching into it and the game to display that in some way and uh, provide some action on it. So we save all that. And don't forget to save our login page here. So now that we've got that, if we go back to our game that we had here, and rather than going directly to it, we're instead going to look at it from a platform's point of view. So here we have a blackboard, we've got our course, and we've got the game that we've, we're just creating um, already installed on here. So when I launch into this, this link, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the login endpoint back to the platform, and then into my game. And you can see that this time already it's different um, because now it's saying, ready, Martin. It knows who I am. And it's saying that I can press space to start. So we've got that information from the LTI launch. We know that the LTI launch is valid. Um, and 
just like that, we have a very basic LTI tool um, using LTI 1.3 and the basic launch. That's pretty amazing, Martin. <laughs> um, it definitely seems like the uh, the library can save on a lot of that heavy lifting to do things like creating and validating the launch. Yep, and uh, yeah, that's the idea is that we want to try and you know remove a lot of the arduous tasks of you know dealing with the security, dealing with uh, kind of the back and forth, making sure that you know, this parameter name is correct, all those things, a lot of that can be um, abstracted fairly easily. So uh, having a library that you can import rather than having to do all of that stuff yourself just makes it a lot easier for people. Um, and, you know, there are, there are multiple libraries like this in many different languages um, that other people have made. So I'll have links to them later on and you can kind of see some of the other work that people have been doing to try and, you know, help everybody uh, build LTI tools quicker. Great. Thanks. 